Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most common techniques used to determine the age of materials like rocks, caves, and ancient archaeological remains, uranium-thorium dating. This method has been key for scientists reconstructing historical and geological events, but like any scientific method, it also has its limitations. Let's break it down. Uranium-thorium dating, also known as the uranium series method, is a type of radiometric dating. It is based on the radioactive decay of uranium-234 into thorium-230. Uranium is a radioactive element naturally found in minerals like calcite, which forms in stalactites, stalagmites, and corals. Over thousands of years, the uranium-234 present in these minerals slowly decays into thorium-230, a process that happens at a constant rate known as half-life. The key here is that thorium is not soluble in water, so it doesn't dissolve or move easily, while uranium does. By measuring the ratios of uranium-234 and thorium-230 in a sample, scientists can calculate how much time has passed since that sample was formed. This method is especially useful for dating mineral formations, such as stalactites and stalagmites in caves, or even corals in marine areas. It has also been used on archaeological materials as long as they contain traces of uranium. One of the most important uses of uranium-thorium dating is in the study of climate. By analyzing cave deposits, scientists can track ancient climate patterns, like wet and dry periods, which allows us to understand how the Earth's climate has changed over hundreds of thousands of years. Section 3. The Reliability of the Uranium-Thorium Method the reliability of the uranium-thorium method is quite high, partly because radioactive decay rates are very well known and constant. Additionally, the accuracy of modern measurements has significantly improved thanks to advanced technologies, such as mass spectrometers. In terms of its temporal precision, the method is capable of providing dates ranging from a few thousand years to over 500,000 years. This makes it especially useful for more recent geological events, though not recent enough to use carbon-14. An important aspect to highlight is that, unlike carbon-14, which can only be applied to organic remains, uranium-thorium can be applied to inorganic materials, which expands its use. Section 4. Limitations of the uranium-thorium method. However, like any dating method, uranium-thorium dating has its limitations. 1. Contamination. If the material being analyzed has been exposed to moving water containing additional uranium or thorium, the results can be altered. This is common in caves or environments where groundwater has moved these elements. 2. Initial equilibrium. Another challenge is that the material being analyzed may have started with different concentrations of uranium and thorium. If there's no clear understanding of this initial equilibrium, the age calculations can be wrong. 3. Age restrictions. Although it's a powerful method, it can't date objects older than 500,000 years, since thorium-230 at that point has decayed to levels that are almost undetectable. 4. Applicable materials. It can only be applied to certain materials that contain uranium in significant amounts. This limits its use compared to other radiometric methods. Section 5. Conclusion and Final Thoughts. In short, Uranium-thorium dating is a highly reliable and accurate method, especially for mineral formations and geological and climatic events of the last few hundred thousand years. However, like any scientific technique, it must be used carefully and under the right conditions to avoid errors. Uranium-thorium dating is just one tool in the vast set of dating methods that scientists have at their disposal. In combination with other techniques, it helps us reconstruct the history of our planet and the changes it has undergone over time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for more videos on science and archaeology.